Nice. Excellent. Any other visiting Rotarians or guests who have not signed up? Jeff? I have a guest for the last time today, <laughs> David Bremer. He works for the legislature and he will become a member this morning. Yay, David! <laughs> All right, I didn't see any of the hands, so we're going to go to Think Rotary. This is again an opportunity for us to share uh, different experiences that, that folks are helping out in the community, businesses especially. So, do I have any Think Rotary moments that we want to share today? Not today. All right. Well, I got to do a better job. Oh, there we go. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, so the other day I met with Nancy LaPointe. She gave me some advice around my financial planning. So, All right. Wow. Excellent. Let's hear from Nancy. If you ever read Nancy's book, Real Good Read, uh, all about uh, some basics of financial planning. Yes, in the back, Madeline. I have the privilege of hosting about 10 legacy goals to people. Yes. Uh, so I also into my driveway and across the golf course and hit people. Wow. She thought she was bowling with her car. Oh, uh, wow. Anyway, the police, Lacey police are wonderful. They did a great job. Yeah. And I feel safe. Excellent. So let's hear it for Jim Mack and the Lacey police. <laughs>
I'd like to call one of our membership chair, Shannon Glenna, who's going to be doing some new induction. Shannon, come on up. He studied psychology at Evergreen State with an emphasis in psychology. Go Blue Ducks. 
and he's a West Olympian Rotarian. Please welcome Bobby Williams. Hey, Bobby. Just very happy to be here speaking at Gateway Rotary. I'm part of the West Olympia Rotary, and I always hear great things about Gateway and all your projects. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Bridge Music Project. My goal is that through this, you'll leave with a better understanding of who we are and what we do, and see that it's something worthy of supporting. So what we do is. We teach youth how music and writing can be used as tools to deal with life's challenges. So we're often working with youth who have had very challenging lives, like they've been in foster care, or they've been homeless, or been incarcerated. So youth who have had really challenging lives. And so we do this work through songwriting workshops. We do this through partnering with schools. We do this in workshops out in the community. And we also do this with workshops at juvenile detention centers. So I'll start by just telling you a little bit about myself. This is me at maybe like age 19 or so. I've been um, rapping and performing since I was a kid. That's always been my real like main passion in life. It's something where I was able to get a sense of identity from it. Something that's just really contributed to me having a fulfilling life. So I've been able to you know, tour across the country and perform with artists I really admire. And um, you know, as I got older and went to college at Evergreen, I studied psychology. And then out of college, I got a job working with youth and foster care. And so these were youth who had bounced through maybe 10 different foster homes, had you know, some real behavioral health challenges. And so my job with those youth was to stabilize them by building a team around them and getting them some support so they could figure out what's going on with them and have you know some stability in their lives. And part of the way I did that was just taking my passion for music and teaching songwriting on a real informal level. Just sitting down and being like, here's a beat, you know, here's a little bit about how you structure a song, here's how you write. And what I saw was that a lot of the youth that I was working with were taking this as an opportunity to write about their experience and process it. So without even me telling them what to write about, they were using it as a tool. And that's the origins of what eventually became the organization. I saw how music and writing could be something that could be a real strong tool for healing. And so our biggest project, you know, we have eight different projects that we do in different communities but the core of it is our community workshops so we'll take a group of youth together um, you know we'll do outreach through um, case managers social workers probation officers school professionals we'll get these youth who we've identified as youth who could really benefit from the project we get them together and over the course of eight weeks we're teaching youth how they can write their own music um, it concludes with them recording at a professional studio and then giving a final performance. And so a lot of it is, um, you know, we create a community contract. So instead of me laying out all the rules, we're coming up with ideas together of what we need to feel supported as a community. Um, a big part of it is team builders. You know, you get 25 youth together, they're going to be a little nervous. And so we do a lot to break them out of their shells and unite the group, and then a lot of breakout groups where they're being led by experienced mentors. And we also have some pretty incredible guest speakers that join us too. Um, you know, we'll have music industry professionals, or we've even had like former Seahawks come and talk to us. So it's, it's a really fun project, and you know, you keep coming back to it. This is our last group. Um, this is Randall Morris and Alonzo Mitz, who are former Seahawks, and this is all of us at the Capitol Theater. This is uh, 
picture from our middle school workshop. We did this at Marshall Middle School. This was a project we did in partnership with the city of Olympia. That's Sweet T. He's a pretty good rapper and performer. This is um, some more of our community workshops. That's Leela. This is our final performance. So we pack it out and we make it like a really good, strong concert, you know, and that's really, you know, confidence building because that's a scary, intimidating thing to do, but they always do it and do a good job. So our target demographics is we're working with youth between the ages of 11 and 21. Um, anyone can join our project, but we do a lot of outreach towards youth who've been in foster care, um, youth who've been incarcerated, or danger of dropping out of high school, have behavioral health challenges, or have been homeless. So, um, you know, just with my experience working in social services, I know who to reach out to so we can get these youth involved. And, you know, why are we doing this? It's because these youth are more likely to have challenges as adults. You know, they're more likely to not graduate get involved in drug use, have behavioral health challenges, experience homelessness, or engage in illegal activity as adults. So this is more than just, you know, something fun to um, fill their time or something. There's a much deeper mission behind all of this. We're teaching you pro-social values, and these are values that can translate to the whole rest of their lives. You know, uh, group accountability is a big piece of this. If we're writing a group song and someone, you know, gets arrested week six, they can't be on the song. Um, we're teaching positive coping tools. So a lot of the youth we work with, they don't have a lot of outlets for how do you, you know, process your experience or you're going through something. So we're teaching how music and writing can be a lifelong tool that they can take with them. Um, a lot of collaboration is compromise and working together as teams so we're teaching you know how can you work with people get through a whole project we're teaching resilience and follow through too of how can you show up the same place same time for eight weeks start a project have challenges and complete that project um, we're also connecting youth with positive adults so many of the youth may not have a lot of positive adults in their lives, but we have mentors and role models that they can connect with, that they share the common interest of music. I think self-confidence is a big one. Like I was saying, getting on the stage and sharing your story. We see a difference in the youth we work with. They carry themselves a little taller after they do that. I mean, that's, it's a big deal. And then leadership, you know, we have youth who are part of the project who are involved for years and eventually we put them in more leadership roles. So that's something very important. Um, we also partner a lot with the city of Olympia. So we're just finishing our fifth annual summer concert series. Uh, this Friday, we're gonna be performing at Heritage Park. And we do just a bunch of concerts throughout the summer. We do an annual dance tournament. That's very cool. We get dancers from across the region competing. We have um, youth artists and performers. We're at Marshall Middle School. We have a mentorship program. Uh, we just did an album project where we collaborated with the Olympia Symphony on it, and we're able to you know, record symphony members on our song. And then we performed with the symphony at their concert at the Capitol, which was an amazing experience. And we also have been hosting open mics at Rosie's Place, a youth homeless shelter. So this is a picture from our dance battle. I think this was last year. So of like break dancers, pop lockers, all styles of dancing. Um, a big thing is community partnerships. You know, this works because we have community partners. Uh, we were recognized by the Seattle Seahawks last year, got to meet all the players. We were the community organization for Legion of Youth, which was awesome. Got to meet Russell Wilson. Uh, we collaborate a lot with Wands. I don't know if you know the Macklemore song, Thrift Shop. It goes like, I'm gonna pop some days. But it was a big hit, and uh, Wands has been an ongoing partner of ours. Um, you know, we've worked some with the Olympia School District. Uh, we're, we have a chapter in Grays Harbor, and we work with the Garage Music and Arts Center. Uh, we've done workshops with Together, another amazing nonprofit organization. So partnerships and collaboration, those are key values of ours. 
So here's us performing at Youth Advocacy Day. We do a lot of just performances in the community. Here's the Together Youth Awards with Leela being recognized. Results, we've worked with over 400 youth since 2014, 90% uh, satisfaction rate. We've probably recorded you know, more like 60 plus songs now. I think the biggest thing is just the youth who participate that we see involved multiple times. And a lot of times as they develop as artists, we're also seeing them develop as people. We're seeing you know, their communication skills improve. We're seeing results in other parts of their lives. They're graduating high school or they're getting jobs or they're getting enrolled in colleges. And so that's you know, like the biggest result. And uh, another thing is we have hope scales. So we have a tool where we measure youth's feelings that they can impact their own lives. And so that's something we measure over long periods of time which is a standardized you know, tool for measurement. So we're starting to see those results and be able to quantify it, which is the biggest thing. So how can you get involved? I think um, you know, we need all types of volunteers. So any skills people want to lend to the team. Um, we're always, you know, it's a nonprofit organization. So we're always trying to keep it alive and keep it funded. So you can just make a contribution or become a business sponsor. We do a lot of um, public events. We do a summer concert series. Um, you know, we do a lot of concerts, so there's a lot of sponsorship opportunities there. I thought I would play a video for you. This is um, from the Thurston Economic Development Council. We were named Nonprofit of the Year this year, which was really exciting, and um, as part of that, they made a video showcasing the organization. And so we thought more than just make a, um, you know, a little mini documentary, we could, um, uh -oh. <laughs> now there's some other audio going here. Left in the dust for no one to hear. The dust filled my lungs with anger and regret. Okay, so as part of that, we thought instead of making just a little documentary, let's make a um, kind of performance video. So this is what we came up with. Oh, let's see if we can get it on the screen. Okay. Okay. I think we got to kill the PowerPoint here. So it's up on this screen here. Okay. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> well, let's scratch the video. Let's take some <laughs> questions. And uh, I'm happy to talk with you about this. Are you right, questions, folks? Yeah, I'm done with the PowerPoint now. Yeah, Brian, the front of the question. So okay, go ahead. Do you, do you use the uh, ACES test when the kids come to see you? The we haven't, but sometimes we'll like collaborate with schools, and um, you know, we're definitely working with you with high ACES scores. Okay, we got it. All right. Let's see. I'm confident we have it now. Great. Good job, Amanda. I have a tutorial on Friday. We have a <laughs> My words used to feel like they had no meaning. Left in the dust for no one to hear. The dust filled my lungs with anger and regret. I just want to breathe. Group home and alone, just me. With only the moon to talk to at night. Surrounded by so many people that I feel so alone. Be a man, they said. Men don't cry. Bottle it up inside. My words used to feel like they have no meaning. Trying to find my life, but it's all just fleeting. Anger and regret. Four different high schools, four different lives, but one constant suffering that's eating at my mind. My words used to feel like they had no meaning. Then I picked up a pen, grabbed a sheet of paper. It was flowing through the page like water in a river. The music was my lifeboat. From the water I rise, mind over matter. Rhymes to the rafters, on stage sharing my heart, and I found what I was after. 
family, community, acceptance, friends. You will hear my voice. You will hear our voices. We are you. My words just feel like they have no meaning. But my words have meaning. I have meaning. It's the bridge. That's um, Mike Jones, who's a longtime participant with us, and I think that really kind of sums up what we're all about and why we're doing this work. So, okay, I'll open it up for questions now. Go ahead. Uh, I heard somewhere that you're having a fundraiser on October 17th. Oh, yes, we are. Uh -huh. So we do um, our annual community reception, and so October 17th, we're just kind of putting together the final details for that. But thank you for bringing that up. And I'll be sure to let you know or spread the word here when it's coming up. Go ahead. So, Bobby, how are the kids selected? Do they, do they come to you or are they pointed out to you by someone else? They're referred to us, so we do a lot of outreach to like alternative high schools or probation officers or youth professionals. And we kind of have a reputation now that we've done this a while. So when we have a workshop coming up, we get a lot of referrals. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Are you just local here in Puget Sound, or are you, is the program spreading around? Or? So we're expanding. We have a uh, Grace Harbor chapter now. And um, so we've been doing that for a year, and we're partnering with another nonprofit out there, the Garage, and then also with the Grace Harbor Juvenile Court. We're doing workshops for incarcerated youth. And so that's been kind of our expansion this last year, and we're planning to stay a presence out there too. And so it's interesting here in Olympia, a lot of the music kind of leans more towards hip hop. And in Grace Harbor, it's more like singer, songwriter, rock kind of style. So we just kind of accommodate to whatever the community is feeling. But it was just interesting going out there and seeing how different that was. But they're very talented. There's a lot of talented youth there. Is there anyone that you don't accept if you're any kind of a criteria? Uh, we try our hardest to accept everyone that we can. You know, like sometimes we're working with youth who have, you know, like challenges where they've gotten in trouble. And so we'll do like plans around like if we have to supervise them or something, but we try to accommodate as many youth as we can. We'll also be like, you know, paying attention and making sure like everyone's taken care of and everything. Or even youth with real like, big disabilities we try to include and accommodate. So a lot of what we're doing is we're making programming for youth who wouldn't be able to participate in other things. So we do our best, you know, we haven't, if, if a youth's like cussing us out or something, we, we don't let them continue. But short of that, I try my best to, you know, keep everyone involved. All right, last question, Mike. So Bobby, what can I expect to see at the concert on Friday night? Oh yeah. so. Friday, we're going to be at Heritage Park. Good question. Um, we have this awesome band who goes by Form Destroyer, formerly DBSP, performing a very amazing, like, funk, funky, uh, soulful band. So that's going to be a great show. And then we also have Youth from the Bridge performing. It's going to be some of our Grace Harbor youth, too who have more of that singer-songwriter kind of style. So you can expect to see some talented youth um, and uh, you know some awesome bands from the local community. So come out this Friday, Heritage Park. If you look up End of Summer Block Party on Facebook, you should be able to find us. Hey, Bobby, I think what Mike meant is what can we expect to see, maybe a sample of your jam. Oh, <laughs> OK. Um, Come on, we don't sing. We don't sing. Let's see, if we have a minute, I could freestyle. Yeah. We got to close out. But what, what, this is on you folks. All right, one minute. Okay, let's see if we can get our, can we get our other YouTube video? This is on you guys. Okay, we'll see. So sometimes, you know, I've been performing a long time, so if everyone can hold up just whatever you have in your pockets, and the more random, the better. If we can just get back to YouTube, I could look it up real quick. Okay.
So whatever you have, and we'll just kind of make up a song here with all of us. So just hold something random up, and we'll see. Okay, once we get past our commercial. All right. There we go. Okay. All right. So I haven't done this at a Rotary Club yet, but we'll um, make a little noise if you're going to have fun.
So you might be tapped on the back or on the shoulder, hopefully everywhere appropriate to be tapping. And uh, we're, we're going to be asking folks to be also joining committees. This is going to be a big part of what we want to do. We want everybody, and I think I said this at the beginning uh, of the year, everybody's going to be a part of a committee. So if you have a committee that you're interested in, whether you're like, wow, that's something I'm, I'm I'm interested in becoming a part of. Uh, then make sure you find that chair. It's all listed on Club Runner. You can always ask me, hey, Len, I like this, this committee. I figured who the chair is. I'll certainly point you in the right direction. Uh, with that said, uh, we're going to be moving into our fun time for the week. So let's hear it for our Sergeant at Arms, Madeline. 